Hi, I am Father Kwame, the administrator of St. Charles Borromeo Catholic Community here in Livermore, California. We thank and praise God that you can join us to worship God by means of this live webcast or later on through our YouTube channel. Whether you are alone or with family, we wish you an inspiring worship experience with us in this Mass. This COVID-19 pandemic has deprived us of our physical association and I know how dearly we all miss each other and we miss each other's presence. But the good news is this, COVID-19 cannot take away the bond we have with God and each other in Jesus Christ because God is spirit and our covenant with God in Christ is a spiritual one, not a physical one. And that bond is possible always through all media. So open your heart, expect God to nourish you through this Mass with the Word and the Sacrament. Let us now worship. Good morning. Morning. Within your will, O Lord, all things are established, and there is none that can resist your will. For you have made all things, the heavens and the earth, and all that is held within the circle of heaven. You are the Lord of all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, we celebrate the liturgy of Monday in the 27th week of ordinary time. In this Mass, Jesus exhorts us and teaches us who is our neighbor, how to recognize who our neighbor is so that we may be able to obey the law of loving God and loving our neighbors. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass, let us call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our reading today is Paul's letter to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, I am amazed that you are so quickly forsaking the one who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. Not that there is another. But there are some who are disturbing you and wish to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel other than the one that we preach to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, and now I say again, if anyone preaches to you, a gospel other than the one you received, let that one be accursed. 
Am I now currying favor with human beings or God? Or am I seeking to please people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a slave of Christ. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human being, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. The Responsorial Psalm The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The works of his hands are faithful and just. Sure are all his precepts, reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. He has sent deliverance to his people. He has ratified his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped and beat him and went off, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. Then he, lift, he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn, and cared for him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, Take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim. He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we are blessed once again to have one of our lay 
preside us to preach the word of God to us and to reflect on the word of God we have just heard. Let us open our hearts and our minds and receive God's word preached. Today's gospel uh, tells us the parable of the Good Samaritan. In Jesus' time, the Samaritans were the outgroup to the Jews, and the Jews were the outgroup to the Samaritans. This animosity had religious and political roots going back hundreds of years. One article I read compared it to the hatred between the Irish Catholics and the British Protestants in our lifetimes. The Samaritan, in the parable, acted with loving mercy for the beaten man. He wasn't concerned whether he was a Jew or not, and he didn't worry about his own safety. Were there still robbers in the area waiting to rob more travelers? He took the time to give first aid and to get the man to shelter where he could be taken care of and recuperate. I mean, he was on a trip himself. He, he was probably wanting to get there, and he did take the time to help this person. And then he didn't quibble about what it was going to cost for that person to stay there for a few days to perhaps get more treatment and to rest and recuperate. And he even promised to cover any additional costs on his return trip. Well, you can imagine the impact that, that, that Jesus' parable had on the lawyer. He was made to see, he had to admit, that a person who was a member of the out group, a group that was despised by his group, was the very neighbor that he should love as himself, and that he should even emulate. Go and do likewise, Jesus said. In our community within ourselves, what is the culture, our race, our religion that we judge and reject? Do we ignore their need for help because they are in an out group? For myself, I would tend to cross the street to avoid homeless beggars in San Francisco, or I would sit apart from anyone I judge to be objectionable, dangerous, doesn't look so good on a bar train. In my youthful days as going to Catholic school, I remember being told to avoid all Protestants because they were going to you know, be dangerous for my faith. Don't go in a Protestant church. Don't make friends with Protestants. Well, my parents, uh, fortunately, didn't hear that uh, objection or that uh, message. And um, I believe I went to a YWCA for swimming lessons when I was a kid. There are people in Livermore, in our very community, who have been really affected by the, the pandemic and all the ramifications of, of the pandemic, the economy, and, and losing jobs, and being anxious, being isolated. Uh, and of course, the pandemic itself, and all the divisive political rhetoric, and all the inaction at the federal level, have intensified the effects and, and the ramifications of, of the pandemic. Um, Hearing the parable of the, of, the, of the Good Samaritan, I, you can't withhold help because it would be inconvenient or that you're sure that the person is not gaining the system or figuring out whether the person is documented or not. We need to offer aid unconditionally. Buy a meal for the person hanging out at McDonald's or writing a check to Tri-Valley Haven or attending a meeting or an event that's put on by Interfaith Interconnect to get to know our neighbors of other religions. So we can put ourselves in the shoes of the Jewish lawyer, hearing in the parable what it takes to be a good neighbor. And we can put ourselves then in the shoes of the Samaritan and actually be a good neighbor. Amen.
My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus taught his disciples to pray often and without ceasing. We ask for hearts and minds that will no longer have out groups, but will show love and mercy to all as good neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom and discernment and civility as we determine who and what to vote for in this election, we pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all the essential workers in these pandemic times, that they are protected and treated with great care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have requested prayers of healing and comfort through our bulletin and prayer circle, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions we hold in our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, O loving Father. We call out to you in the name and power of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth, the work of our hands. It will become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of our hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with a humble and contrite heart. Lord, what shall we end with the weaknesses of our sins? Brothers and sisters, let us continue to pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of true peace, graciously grant that through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and in heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created human beings, and when we were justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed us through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, O Lord, are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread. 
gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity and justice, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all leaders of the world. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our times, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your followers, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Brothers and sisters and friends, this is the Lamb of God. This is Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to share in this spiritual food. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us now unite ourselves with Jesus in this Eucharist 
by praying the spiritual prayer of communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you suffered, died, and rose from death to save us. I believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken and the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making me a part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in me your sacrificial presence and let me be united with you at this moment so that in all my thoughts, words, and actions, I may represent you and love others as you love me. Amen. The Lord is good to those who hope in God, to the soul that seeks God. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to continue loving God and loving our neighbors. Thanks be to God. <laughs>